Okay, this is the um, July 9th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Our meeting is being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by residents and uh, the public. I had a very nice compliment today on, on the way our meetings are being done, and thank you, Alyssa. Okay, first item on the agenda, we have minutes for the June 25th uh, meeting. Phil, have you reviewed the minutes? I have. I thought that they were well done, as usual. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see any uh, any problems with the minutes. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for June 25th. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Great job, as usual. You're welcome. Okay, we have five warrants tonight. We have a vendor warrant for uh, fiscal year 2018 for $85,543. A vendor warrant for fiscal year 2019 for $536,647. And that's because of our quarterly payment, okay, to the school. The school. Yeah. Uh, we have a payroll warrant of for uh, fiscal uh, 2019 of uh, $113,807, a payroll deduction warrant for fiscal year 2019 for $27,089, and a student activity warrant for fiscal year 2018 for 4100 dollars Fourteen dollars. Make a motion to approve those warrants. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Any meetings since last? Uh, uh, a bunch of meetings of the board. hiring committee for the new frontier principal. Got it okay. down to two finalists. I think the decision is being made tomorrow by the superintendent. So. Okay. Did you get a good? Uh, good you, range. You interview eleven people. After a while, they all start to sound the same. I. I yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I, th I hope so. Okay. All right. And you guys are satisfied with your final selection? I think so. Yes. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, all right. I attended a meeting of the Franklin County Selectmen's Association. Uh, it was on the 28th. That was up at Mohawk Park in um, Charlemont. Oh, I forgot about that. We were all there. Yes, you were there as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty good presentation by Rural Commonwealth and um, Linda Dunleavy from uh, Furtock. Okay, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Joe, you have any comments? No. No, good. No. Okay, no public comments. Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no old business. New business. Okay, to appoint Philip Snow as the Assistant Emergency Management Director. He uh, should be coming, are but you, he's not here yet. yet. Okay. He's going to be here in, I, in person. I okay, why expect don't, him to be here. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll skip over that one for right wanna, now. Uh, William's here. Do you want to do William well, first? William, well, Rogers, come on in. William. Roger's yes. not here either. So. All right. Phil, <clears throat> so, Phil, welcome. John O'Rourke. <clears throat> <Yeah. clears throat> uh, Tom Hutchison. Hi, hey, Tom. Uh, yeah. Shall I sit down? Oh, of course. Sure. Yes. We got it warmed up. Thank you. It's warm enough. <laughs> Joe, do you want to give your recommendation yes. on uh, Mr. Mobius? We <laughs> would like to recommend Bill Mabius. Mm -hmm. Mabius. Yeah, right? I say Mobius. Mabius. Mabius. Yeah. It's okay. I, I made the same mistake. <laughs> Phil was active in Amherst on the zoning board, and are we, was, are we spelling your name right? Yeah, M O E. Okay. Yeah, you okay. It should okay. have an umlaut that got, got lost. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think it was, was it the governor. I was, a, I was the governor's appointee on the Amherst redevelopment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he comes with a wealth of background. He was on the ZBA. No, you can't have him for the ZBA. We want him for the planning board. <laughs> okay. I was chair of that for five years. So yes, I'm putting his name in nomination to fill the <coughs> currently vacant term till the next election. Okay. All right. So we're talking until 5-16-19, correct? That's the yes. date of the next election. Yes. That's okay. The next election. So this would be for one year and then mm -hmm. there will be two years remaining on that. So then it would be, he would, there would be an, uh, an opening on the warrant. 
Frank Carcass for a two year term. Okay. So you're highly recommending Mr. Davies? Highly recommending. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any questions? I only know him as a budding researcher of the Billings family residence. Um, <laughs> That's right. Um, yes, you, you but, uh, so <laughs> well, I, I read interest. the history of, of Sunderland yeah. as recommended. So what a story. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's great, great, great snag, in, great snag on your part. Well done, good recruitment. How long have you been in town, Bill? I forget. Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. I mean, it was over twenty years. He lives up behind the bank. On oh Parsons, sure, Parsons yeah. Drive, yeah. Parsons Road. I, mean. mm -hmm. I think this is supposed to be a joint apartment, so I'm supposed to vote with you, I guess. Okay. All right, you want to vote mind. with us? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record show we voted together. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, based on your very high recommendation <laughs> and the other members of the planning board, of course, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, appointment of Mr. William Mabius, known as Bill, mm -hmm. uh, to serve on the planning board uh, for term ending May 16th. Uh, 2019. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, that was tough. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> if that's really a joint appointment, you should get the planning board to vote, unless well, it already yeah. has. I know, we all we'll vote. Okay. I thought they were going to be here. But. Okay. All right. I Bill, will. thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate your help. <coughs> Pleasure. Forward to more. On that, no, I'm going to leave. Thank you for your participation yeah, yeah, yeah. tonight, Joe. You're most welcome. Good night. All right, next thing we'll do is uh, the appointment of Roger um, so he gets oh, Gauchet. Right. Yes, and uh, um, Lee is actually planning to be here at 6.20. Okay, well, because uh, Roger is not going to be available tonight. He's away until tomorrow, so she okay. wanted to talk All right, we'll, about we'll, that. We'll hold off on that as well. Uh, All right, next item on the agenda is to discuss the corrective action plan requested by Ron Sweet related to Lane Construction's paving of Matthews Road. Come on up, Ron. Come on up, Ryan. Sure. Ryan Howard, John O'Rourke. How you doing? It's okay, too. Uh, okay, what do we got, Ron? Well, I've come up with a letter that I'm hoping that the select board will um, move forward um, as, as you know Matthews Road got paved mm -hmm. and we did a lot of work before the paving started mm -hmm. and the paving was done in one day June 21st and then we they had specific requests of what I wanted, of width of the road. First, starting at the town line, it was supposed to be 18 feet wide to 1,100 feet, and then go out to 20 foot for the remainder of the road. There's places that it's almost five feet wide, wider than it's supposed to be, which has really hindered our shoulder work. The black top is in places out to the edge where there's no shoulder left to the road and we've had issues with the rain starting to wash the bank down because there's nothing that we can do with it. Uh, the other things that are wrong with, that we have issues with is the road is cracking in several places, roading um, which is causing the edges to curl up so the water can't get off the road. Um, now that it's a public document. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's a lot of lines from the rollers, which I guess maybe aren't a huge factor, but it's still an appearance thing. Mm -hmm. All these issues were in the, all the time that I've been in charge of the department, we've never had any of these issues. And we're not comfortable with what we got for a product. And so I'm looking to see if there's something that we can do to... Okay, have, have you discussed it with, with, with Brian? We talked last week 
and basically they were willing to cut the width down but as far as the other parts of it they said that they, were, they didn't see a problem or they were actually saying that it was maybe caused by the reclaim company that reclaimed the road and was compaction and stuff. And Brian, what do you have? Well, my understanding is uh, <clears throat> the testing that was done with District 1, um, everything checked out fine with the cores, corn house. Um, <clears throat> it had rained and there was an area where there's a tire rut, I think it's near the town line. Mm -hmm. um, it's right on, it's right on your mark. Um, we're not sure if it was one of our trucks or a truck bypassing the bridge down there. Cause well, the, the road was closed, so the only trucks that were on the road, on that road was your truck. Oh, okay. All right. And then we closed the road for the sure. day. Well, as we can attribute to that, it was the subgrade there might have been soft from the rain. Mm -hmm. But several places. That's not that. I showed you the worst one. Like, yeah, I just drove up through there. I didn't see a crack in the road. I um, got pictures. I didn't see any roller marks. In fact, if you walk the road, you see a lot more. No. All right. So, so this letter hasn't gone to uh, Mr. Duran yet, correct? No. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. Um, I'm looking for signatures so that we can send it to him. Okay, and then you, then you'll have more discussions with Brian on that. Okay. Have you seen any of these um, uh, complaints? Um, I wasn't copied on the corrective action plan. I did get a copy from Andrew Wood from Franklin County. Okay. That I think our corrective action plan was not accepted. Correct. All right. So I'm not sure. She replied to it. Oh, okay. So you didn't get a copy of that, her reply? I got her reply, yes. So I didn't get our corrective action plan. I guess they felt they didn't need to see it or something. But, but I really wanted uh, Sam Merkel to be here because he's the one who discussed the paving job with it. Mm -hmm. But he was detained tonight, so he couldn't make it. So I figured someone should show up and represent Lane. Um, okay, so so we're we're basically in, in the initial stages of negotiating this now, mm -hmm. and what you need from us is our um, support of of uh, your plan for uh, corrective action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, questions, Phil? Um, so, I mean, I, the good place to start would be just to address like the with each other is the specific statement, there. factual statements. Mm -hmm. and, but what's agreed upon and what's not agreed upon, I'm still kind of... Actually, um, there's their response right. to the corrective action plan. And that, w that was written after we met with you. Correct. Now, the only thing that, and I discussed it with Tim Duran, who was with me that day, he's the one who drew up the outline for this. I said you didn't put the two frames and grids in there, and I insisted that they be in there. So that and that's minor, but I mean, we'll, yeah. we'll certainly correct right. that. So. so I mean, this this letter indicated that well, b besides the two loads asphalt, all other concerns were addressed in the field, and no other action was agreed necessary. Who, so who agreed that that? I'm no not other sure because I did not agree to. I, you were going to mark the road. I was going to mark the road to, for the cutting part. In there? Yes, that part is. Okay. But all these other issues weren't, I mean, you kind of were saying that there was no, no issues there, and there clearly is. I mean, so that's what they're hoping for. I had look at the road. Hey, and, have, have you two done. done this together, gone out and looked at the road? Yes, we did. You well, have, we haven't walked it, the whole thing, and I guess that's where we need to go. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Yeah. Okay. And then let's, you know, let's figure out how we can work okay. this out. Okay. Um, I, I would really like this letter to okay. move forward, Bill. So okay. You have any questions on the letter? No. Okay. I'll make a motion that we sign the letter to uh, Mr. Duran, uh, just uh, going over some of our concerns about the paving on Matthews Road. Is that a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, And I'm, and I'm sure you guys can work this this out. Oh, well, so. Or not. Whoa. <laughs> I hope so. But okay. 
a lot of money for. Yeah, <laughs> we have a reputation at stake, so we appreciate it. Ryan, appreciate thank you for coming in. Coming and caring enough for sure. well, Ron. Good seeing you. Take it. Okay, Lee is here. And Lee, come on up. Hi, Lee. See you later. And Philip Snow is here. This is Philip Snow. Hi, Philip. Oh. Okay. Next time. Next. <laughs> next, next up. <laughs> okay, I've come on behalf of the Board of Assessors. Um, Everyone in town should have received our hot little green card yes. a couple of weeks yes, ago. Yeah. Yes, and as part of that, we would like to take on a part-time assistant for the couple of months duration of this project to be hopping in and out of the car, doing the photography while the assessor in the car reviews the property. To help Malcolm? To help Malcolm. He's going to be our primary driver for this, and he'll be reviewing the data card, the card data, as he's, you know, but he's also uh, now well past retirement age and uh, not able to do the jumping in and out of the car business anymore. Okay. And so we've had, uh, we put out a, a job description, essentially looking for someone who is uh, able, you know, certainly able-bodied, uh, has some photography skills mm -hmm. okay. as far as, you know, formatting a good picture and not missing half the house and all this kind sure. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have had one application. Uh, no more today? No. No. Okay. And, um, and the winner is uh, well. Roger Gaucher has applied. Unfortunately, he is away until tomorrow. That had been a pre-scheduled man of trick. many talents. I know he had a number of years in the computer field before he went to work at Sandry and uh, does a lot of photography himself. Uh, I think that he would represent the town well. As if anyone came out to speak with him, and he'd also be directed to turn them toward Malcolm, but, you and, know, it seems like he would, uh, could do a very good job for us, so I'd like to ask that you consider okay. hiring him uh, at $11 an hour for the duration of this project, which is expected to go a couple of months. Okay. Hmm. And if we had any more applications in addition, I'd be very happy to look at them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because having a second person on board might not, you know, might be a very good idea and could even speed the work along. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is something that Malcolm needs uh, because absolutely, yeah, he's he's, he's absolutely yeah, yeah. He can uh, he's he said he's got the knowledge. He drives. He, he yes, he has the assessing knowledge. He yeah. knows all the properties in town now. Yeah. But uh, physically, that would be okay. more so than he could. Basically, an accommodation for Malcolm. Which it is, is. That's great. It is, okay. and it's going to move the project along, and with our big conversion coming in August, that's important, mm -hmm. too. Good. Okay. Any other questions? Um, the, uh, I was approached by a neighbor that uh, was concerned that this wasn't voted on by town meeting. Um, the, the decision to add a new employee wasn't voted on by town meeting. I don't really know how all that works, but I, I was told that you had the money in your budget. Yes, we uh, have. So, so that there was no town meeting vote necessary. Yes. Um, it's also a temporary position. Yeah. yeah right. a, um, and the money is already in our conversion account that's been funded by two articles in the past couple of years. Yes. Yeah. So we have pre planned for this. Okay. Yeah? Okay. I think Roger's thoroughly capable well, of good, the job. That's right. It, it was a good question. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would want anyone to. Probably. No. Okay. So with your recommendation, uh, we will uh, appoint Roger uh, as a temporary part-time evaluation program conversion assistant. Yes. He may be downloading photos in the office. You know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. But he will have nothing whatever to do with evaluations of any, you know, nothing. Of course. And he will not be representing the Board of Assessors in any way. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And he can walk to work. Yeah. That too. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you for coming in, Lee. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I hope we'll be able to start later this week. Okay. He's due home tomorrow. We, we, we do need to vote on it, though, and, and there is uh, an appointment. Uh, didn't, didn't I just call for a vote on that? Let's make double right. I, I will make a motion that we appoint 
uh, Roger Gaucher on the recommendation of our administrative assessor, Natalie. Uh, and uh, to be a part-time evaluation program conversion assistant. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Okay, we supposedly have something in here. Okay. okay to go in, into effect? All in favor? Yes. Go into effect, into effect immediately. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have a, a letter or a... You should have a form in there. There should be a form. There's a lot of forms in there. Yeah, there's a lot. More than just get me another one. Um, so, hmm. Some of these are, are ones that are being redone? Or no. Because... Okay. Well. All right. We've we've made the vote, and yes, you know, I will you. stop by and, and sign the, the official mm -hmm. form. Okay. Whenever whenever okay. we can get it. I'll email Roger and start training on Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Great. Thank He's you. Got to get sworn in, and oh we yes, can't Jenny. do that until we have the form. So we should try to do that tomorrow, if that will be possible for you, John. Yeah. Okay. Um, to get the form, yes. I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna just print it out right now. Oh, you will? Right. Okay, good. Beautiful. All right. Very good. And then he can be sworn in by Jenny on Thursday. Thursday, Drew. When is she in? Tomorrow. She's in tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. Yes. Yeah. Good. So we we'll take that. Does a part-time employee have to take the ethics test? Yes. Good. Fine. Uh, we can yeah, do that so. very easily. I think so. We can yeah. do that right through our office when he's mm -hmm. in on Wednesday. Yep. I assume so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. Thank you. Philip, come on up. See ya. See ya. John O'Rourke. Nice to meet you. Doing. Please have a seat. Phil Pia too. So um so um our emergency management director, George Murphy, spoke with me and, and highly recommends you for for the assistant emergency management director position. Um, do you have any questions for Phil? Um, no, if Murph says, Murph highly recommends you though. That's, yeah. that's different than just a little than about your <laughs> Phil. Um, currently I'm the Assistant Director of Safety and Security at Deerfield Academy. <clears throat> I've been there for five and a half years now. Um, I have my Master's degree in Public Safety Leadership. Um, okay. I got my start in Public Safety the National Park Service as a law enforcement ranger. Um, with the UMass and my bachelor's in forestry. So I used that route to work my way into public safety. Um, I'm an EMT. I've uh, been certified as wildland firefighter. So I've kind of dipped my feet in a little bit of everything. So you've got the experience. Yeah. He's not only ICS 100, 700, he's ICS 200. Whoa. So okay. he's, he's, he's moving up in the, uh, yeah. in the emergency management uh, certification system as well. That's great. Okay. Mm. Any other questions for Phil? Well, I think that your other jobs have more emergencies than you're going to have you. I think that. <laughs> oh, that, uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I like know. I was telling George, um, you know, I've been in Colorado for. Don't, don't call me George. He likes Murph. Yeah. Murph, okay. Yeah, uh, he, he gets Murph. upset. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Conway for almost two years now, and I've been wanting to get involved with the town in one way or another. And I saw on the town website it said there was a vacant position for assistant EMD, and that Murph was looking for help. So. He lives right across the road from me, and uh, uh -huh. I happened to bump into him one day, so I talked to him about it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he, had, he had, as I said, he had spoken to me about it and uh, highly recommended you. And you know, Murph's opinions are good. So thank you for volunteering. We yes, appreciate yes, it. no problem at all. Phil, take care. Thank you. Good meeting you. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. formal vote for that one, too. Probably. Well, I'll, I'll, make will, I will. I'll make a motion. I'll make the motion. Go ahead, you make the motion. Go. I'll make a motion to appoint Philip Snow as Assistant Emergency Management Director, uh, effective immediately. For a term ending? Uh, it would be uh, June 30th, 2019. 2019. That'll be an annual appointment. Yeah, fiscal, yeah. Uh, fiscal year. Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank great. you, Philip. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.
Okay, next item is to approve the budget amendment for Frontier Regional School District for reallocation of $20,000 in excess and deficiency funds for upgrades to building security. Now, we had that on the last agenda, but we tabled it for more information, and we yeah, didn't I get was, more information. I, I, I was hoping to get more, and I think what happened is we just ran into summer vacation. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure they'll, they'll get us more, but... Uh, I do know. I do know a lot about that. Yeah. Basically, we, um, this is kind of un probably the select board's never been asked to approve an E and D expenditure before, um, and that is because the school committee for forty years just has done that. has done it. Yeah. And somebody at the uh, Sunderland select board saw something in the legal code that said that once your budget is approved, if there's still E and D money that's unexpended, if you wish to expend it for any. Re for, uh, that you, you you have to notify the select boards and give them 45 days to object or um, whatever. So this is actually asking to, for it to be approved so that they can go ahead and order the work, but it's for building. Right, right now, um, everybody's got a key to that building. Every, well, not everybody, but hundreds of people have a key to that yeah, building yeah. Okay. over the years. And it's just, a, it's, it, it'll be four doors that have, that are electronically. So what we're doing here is basically for a format. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the budget amendment for Frontier Regional School District for reallocation of $20,000 in the excess and deficiency funds for upgrades to building security. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, next item is discussion of the Conway aggregation plan. Uh, we did send this around to you. I was kind of hoping uh, Bob would be around to... Uh, talk about it since he's so uh, so fired up about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it will be important to have as much publicity and public meeting talk about this as, as possible yeah. as the what, what, nor what normally happens by. What normally happens in the process is that the documents are put together, including the plan. Um, they get some um, review by the board uh, the board votes to submit those to the Department of Energy Resources for consultation. They look over the documents. If there's any suggestions by them for changes or clarifications, those are put in the documents. We get a letter of consultation from, from the Department of Energy Resources. Then it goes to the Department of Public Utilities for their review and approval. Um, once you get toward the end of that process with the DPU, there's public outreach that has to be done, marketing and public outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan is put on the website, and it's also here in the office and in the library and the clerk's office. Citizens come in, review the plan if they wish, and make comments. Uh, those become part of the documents that go to the DPU. And uh, once the plan is approved by DPU, there's more intense marketing and public outreach, and then um, uh, goes out to competitive bid. Uh, that outreach continues. There's a formal letter that goes out called a customer notification letter to everybody in town who's on the basic service of Eversource, comparing the Eversource rate and the aggregation rate, and they have 36 days to say yay or nay. If they, don't, if they want to join the program, they don't do anything. If they don't want to, they send in a card with their name and they're out. And they stay with the basic service uh, of Eversource. So it's, it's, a, it's a really, you know, uh, organized and uh, routine process that we go through. So and we do have a copy of the plan, or at least a draft plan, if anyone wants to look at it. Right. Uh, this is one thing the select board will have to approve, mm -hmm. as I understand it. So it would probably be good to go through it at some point and just talk about the various sections that are covered so that we uh, we have done that. And uh, yeah, the, the, the plan itself is part of a group of documents that need our approval, Yeah, uh, including the, the petition uh, and the way we came about voting for it on the board, mm -hmm. uh, the public outreach plan, um, uh, the customer notification letter that's going to go out. All these things come before us for our look-see uh, and the approval of the DPU. So, so can I, just, uh, just a process question. So who does the outreach? Uh, the outreach is done by the consultant. 
the town, the town has no expense involved in this. The only uh, time required by the town is decision making time. But the consultant takes care of everything. It's it's in their um, in their contract, and it, they get paid from the competitive supplier that wins. Okay, so we're not involved in the passage of money right. at all. Right, and then um, so after all, after the whole process, what's the, like is there like a statistics kept on how many? What's the percentage of a town? That still is shocked and surprised when they get a bill from somebody else. All of a sudden, no matter, no matter, you know, I'm I'm in this business. Okay, no matter how much public outreach you have, you always get people who the customer notification letter goes out and they're like, "What is this about?" You know, right. uh, it, it it it's very difficult to reach all of the people. Oh, tell me about it. And even if you do reach all of the people, some of them won't understand. Yeah. So there are always questions in that last two weeks of the opt-out period where it's like, you know, there, there will be calls coming in here and there will be a number for the consultant to call. Just refer all those num all those calls to the consultant. Okay, that's the way that works. Okay. But like, like you say, no, it, no matter what kind of coverage you do, there will be questions. Yeah. Yeah, people get their information from a million different sources. You can't cover all the bases. Uh, yes, yes, uh, and and we had it. We had a couple of occasions where there were um, intense uh, memberships in Facebook pages in some of these towns, and you get one person passing misinformation, and it spreads like wildfire. And it's very difficult to overcome once it's been spread. So it's it's kind of interesting, but you know. So hopefully, the consultant what, answers phone calls promptly and does his best to put those fires out as they emerge. Oh, oh, you have to. It's absolutely essential. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and Colonial will do a good job for us. Uh, so mm -hmm. you know, I, I I wouldn't worry about it because it we would be in a group of. Uh, 12 other towns doing this all at one time. So it'll, it'll be advantageous. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, next, I will talk about social media. Next yeah. item, social media policy, social media account, email contact information. What does that mean? There are a number of uh, emerging best practices in municipal social media. And uh, I think one of them is going to be uh, a good place to start for us. And that is, you know, when you sign up for a social media account, you have to have an email contact. Mm -hmm. And the email contact should be a town email. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that none of the current uh, social media pages representing themselves as the town of Conway uh, Facebook pages have a town email contact right. as 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 who they're from. Um, this is, I think, the beginning of a of a longer conversation. We do have the basic sort of social media policy in our employee handbook. That that's more about what you post, and you can't dispose post things that are disparaging to the town, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But there are some more technical aspects like this that uh, I'm going to be learning more about. I, I started learning about them at a recent STAM meeting. And so there's a, a fairly active discussion about, you know, best practices. And clearly one of them is, is that you want the email account tied to the town. Yes. Uh, there, are, there are now, I think, seven Town of Conway, maybe eight, um, Facebook accounts at least three of which are no longer functional. And I don't know how to get rid of them at this point. Uh, our IT consultant says there is a way. It, and it's very long and involved because, of course, Facebook doesn't want to get into yeah, the yeah. business of yeah. people trying to disable other people's accounts. Sure. It can be done, and I intend to enter into that process. But it's going to take a while. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm mentioning it is you may have noticed our new website is up. Yes. And uh, one of the things that we want to have is 
links to Facebook pages that that you know the town has because yeah. that's another way that people can can be involved. Um, the uh, the highway department has an excellent Facebook page. The fire department has an excellent Facebook page. Uh, the Parks and Recreation has a Facebook page that doesn't seem to be consistently used. Uh, actually, the fire department has two Facebook pages. The emergency management department has two Facebook pages, one of which is no longer used. So um, I'm struggling a little bit with how to get uh, a grip on all of this various activity and come up with uniform policies that aren't too tight, but nonetheless uh, ensure that the municipality has a say in uh, the Facebook pages that are representing it. Mm -hmm. So this, I just wanted to mention this as a, the beginning of a conversation mm -hmm. of there are some things we, uh, we should be doing for best practices that uh, currently aren't happening and letting you know and everybody know that I'm starting to come up with things. And I will have more formal policies to present and, and be voted on. And, and this, is, this is one, um, you know, I'd hope to have more, more ready for this meeting, but it, it's, it's an important thing. It's not particularly urgent. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it'll come back at some point. I just wanted to give a kind of a public heads up about that. Certainly one of the best practices we should, we should get into shortly, uh, and, and maybe Roy can do this quickly, is that each of us should, Philip and Bob and myself, should have a uh, Conway uh, email address. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if Roy could do that for us. Yes. But that way, public records requests would not entail um, access to our personal yeah, yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, uh, that's something that uh, officials throughout the Commonwealth uh, have been struggling with for quite some time now. Because, you know. Every email address is another six dollars or something like that, you know, a month. So, and oops, oh, it's not in this year's budget. So, well, we'll just let it go for now, and that doesn't get addressed. Um, yes, I will make sure that happens. Okay. The, the other big concern about so the social once you have a social media policy, then you then you then become liable for bad social media policies, and the uh, the, the the thing the thing about it is that. Uh, the, the big thing is like restrict or having policies that cover contact with minors. And mm. we have a lot of departments that have, that interface with my part between parks and rec and fire and everybody else that interfaces with minors. Um, there, there should be real specific rules of the road regarding what type of communication is appropriate and what type is not. Um, yeah. And we do have some of that in our current, um, in our current hand and how liability can attach yeah, the, the, to for the, employees the, actions. The, uh, yeah, the social media policy thing can be a, a double-edged sword mm -hmm. uh, because if you do have a real specific policy then it's easy to say you've broken that policy. So we've got to be very careful with, with how that shapes up. Yep. Yeah. And I would refer you to the last year's scandal when involving the Frontier Boys soccer coach that was front page newspaper for a couple of days. That was uh, all about social media. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it may come at some point to uh, disabling comments and just sending people, if you want to comment, please comment via our website and have a moderated comment uh, feature on the website. Um, it's nice to have a little bit more fluid interaction. That's what social media is all about. And, uh, both the highway department and fire department get uh, compliments um, and, and not complaints. Uh, so that's been good so far, but these things can turn and we need to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, next item on the agenda is uh, we have appointments for FERCOG as well as other appointments. I'll just run through these quickly. We have appointments, uh, Lynn Rubenstein to the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Lynn has been doing that for a long time. Yeah. 
Uh, we have Berth Beth Gershon as the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Advisory Committee. Beth has been on that committee for a while. We have Bob Baker um, to the Franklin Regional Emergency Planning Committee and the School Repair Committee. No, he's not on the School Repair Committee anymore. He's, he's not going to be on that committee anymore? That was uh, Bob took his place for that. Bob Armstrong? Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to make that Bob Armstrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have Bob Armstrong for Franklin Community Access Television. Bob Armstrong for Franklin Regional, uh, Greater Franklin Regional Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Advisory Committee. That's a big one. Uh, okay, uh, we have me for the FERCOG Council, and we have me for the Upper Pioneer Valley Veteran Services District, and for Frontier Community Access Television. We have Thomas Hutchison for the Franklin Regional Planning Board and the Franklin County Community Inspection Program. Uh, for the Highway Garage Committee, we have Ken We Met. Ron Sweet, Olivia Wyatt, uh, for that committee. Okay. So those are our appointments. Any any questions on any of those? Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, approve all those appointments as read and the correction of the uh, Robert Baker to the school committee to Robert Armstrong to the school committee. Do I have a second? I guess just um, that, that instead of the school committee, that's the building. Uh, that it's, uh, it's the repair committee. Yeah, the building renovation financing committee. Right. I think right. this is the accurate name for that. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Um, after receiving your email, Tom, about that item that, that uh, I wanted to put in, not anticipated. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I we've already actually we've already done that, so we'll just do a recertification of that, so we don't really need to discuss that much. Okay. All right. I have no idea what you're talking about. There, but I guess. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll 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 tell you later. It's not not a big deal. It's administrative. It's an administrative matter. Uh, Tom, your update. Yeah. The um, planning board may be reviewing a proposed five acre, one megawatt solar facility on Pine Hill Road at their August 16th meeting. Wow. Uh, more solar coming to town. What? Uh, Beth, right, right. Okay. Beth Gershman will not be able to attend the next uh, uh, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership meeting on Tuesday, July 17th, and is wondering if any select board members might want to attend in her place. Uh, I've also uh, emailed Bob. He's been interested off and on in the past about that. Right, yeah, he, uh, has, he has taken, he has been at those meetings. So I have the agenda and minutes from the past meeting if anyone is interested. Uh, but I, And I haven't heard back from him, but I don't expect to because he's on vacation. Yeah, I, um, Bob is, is um, yeah, he's interested in that, and I'm sure he'd like to attend. Uh, for departmental news, the only end of fiscal year financial hitch was an overage in the animal control officer's budget of about $70, which was able to be transferred from the dog revolving account with no action needed by the finance committee or the select board. The town clerk maintains a dog revolving account paid for by... Uh, dog tags, and its uh, specific purpose is to help out uh, in animal control, or the, the dog officer part of that. So that was an easy fix for that. Everything else came in under budget, uh, so we should, be, uh, we should be in good financial shape next year. Uh, the ambulance Famous last words. I'm sorry? Famous last words. Yeah, right. Uh, the ambulance director will be in for your next meeting with requests for abatements over an 18-month period ending a year ago, someone on the order of $2,000. Uh, I'm working with her on the presentation. Of course, the details will be kept confidential. This happens occasionally when um, uh, 
there's a consensus that it's no longer worth going after certain bills. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have about that process as we go along. Um, I'll have a certificate of adoption for the next meeting for the final municipal vulnerability preparedness plan. This will include some uh, changes based on that uh, last meeting. Um, some nuance, shall we say, that will help help move things forward in the future. Uh, along with the final version of the plan, that actually should be coming in fairly soon. I have PDFs of that, if anyone would like them now. Um, and as a, if you oh, send that out, that's all right. Um, and, uh, along with a uh, an infographic and a risk matrix, um, I'm happy to send those along. Uh, the changeover to Comcast for our IT provider is set for Monday, July 16th for this building and for Wednesday, July 18th for the town hall and garage. They will bring the lines into the buildings and our IT consultant will be present to oversee the operation. Um, and this is going to bring us a lot more speed for exactly what we're paying now. Okay. So. It's going to be a good deal. Okay. Uh, for the uh, special town meeting, I checked with Ginny and September 17th, 24th, and October 1st, all work for a special town meeting, as well as all dates in December. I know, uh, I think it was the 24th that was favored by the planning board the last time I looked. We still have some time to finally decide on that, okay. uh, but I will check on that. Um, because we should, uh, and I'll have a draft warrant uh, probably for the next meeting. Okay. Because it will come sooner than we think. Right, sure. So that's what I have. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, this just needs re signature. We've already voted on that. Oh. Uh, it's re-signing it because we sent the original off already and Ashfield wanted a scan of the valid document. We understand Bob's not here, so. Um, yeah, that's just... No, this was the lane construction. Oh, that's the lane we signed one. Wrong one. Okay. All right. Ron, Ron already made off with one of the signed ones. No, no, we, we, we uh, have okay. that over here. Okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plan, uh, this is just a plant, plant manager. Okay, this, yeah. is, this is what you want. Okay, select board comments. Do you have any comments, Phil? Um, the one that I, that, uh, I just spoke with, with Ron before the thing about uh, the signs being missing, the no parking signs being missing along the Bartwell's Ferry Bridge, and uh, uh, people c complaining about the high volume of traffic and the increased trash and everything else that is come with that. Right. Yeah. Um, so he said he's going to look into that. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, also uh, heard a comment, a, a, a question: Why haven't Why haven't we enacted the tax yet on Airbnbs that we are entitled to? that they passed a new ability for towns to tax Airbnbs. And I was asked that by a former proprietor in town of a bed and breakfast who was, mm -hmm. they were all, they've all been put out of business by Airbnbs. And I, my, we, we have that many Airbnbs in we, town? Uh, we actually, if you look on, t t and there's, there's three of those websites now, Airbnb is just mm -hmm. the most popular. Airbnb alone, there's 12 in Conway right now. It's oh. hard to tell what town they're in unless you click on them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but I actually do that because I have family yeah, members yeah. that stay at that stay at them, um, oh, okay. and and you're we're entitled to tax those now and make them subject to health, um, and the uh, the the one that my mother stays at, um, the, the 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 owners of that were, are just waiting for that to happen. They think it's completely fair and appropriate that you know since they serve food that a health inspector comes and that, that you know everything else about it. So 
it's what four it's four dollars and whatever it's four percent or three percent of whatever a lot of towns were waiting to see what boston did yeah and and boston just came up with its um agreement so i think you'll see a lot more of it recently because we, we are missing the summer the whatever when when those things are all like I, I tried to get a place last weekend for a relation and they were all booked up in town that the 12 that i checked on were all booked up and we're, so wow. now's the when people are beginning their summer tourism thing. Now's the time to tax um, this thing. You know, this will help. take some uh, coordination with the board of health because uh, they should obviously be involved in anything and, that and involves them going out and doing inspections. What's, what's <laughs> the administrative process involved with that? You know, um, how do you how do you yeah. know when someone has rented their place for a night? Well, it, it how do yeah. You know? It, it's a problem that Ginny runs into all the time because businesses are supposed to register with the town clerk. Sure. Not all businesses do register with yeah. the town clerk. Right. So um, you can get into a process of writing letters to people and then they write you back and they say, well, we used to do that, you know, but we just decided to quit or something like that. And then they might decide to do it again later. Uh, <laughs> So it, it's, uh, there's a bit of um, work that goes into administering something like that. Right, yeah. Um, and has that law actually gone into effect? Yeah. When did it go into effect? July 1? I, I think it was a month earlier even. They okay. ended up passing the, the consensus one that the Airbnb favored, so it went through smoother than they were initially forecasting. I remember that whole right. part of it. Um, right, yeah. And uh, and I believe Airbnb and those websites committed to working with the taxing authorities to provide information. Okay. That that's well, in the law. That's, you, you would absolutely have to do that because that that how would how else would you know? But uh, when, when and you know, the there there's Airbnbs in town that are almost two hundred dollars a night. Really? Yeah. That are really nice places. I mean, there's some really nice places that are available through that. But, um, okay. So the, I'll look into that. That's an actual pot of money out there. Yeah, yeah. Small pot. A pot. Every little small pot helps. Okay. Okay. All right, any other concerns? I have no concerns. Okay. Uh, mail. We got a letter from Comcast outlining the uh, the new choice TV package options for customers uh, and I, su I, I would suppose that everybody who's a Comcast uh, subscriber got a copy of this letter Tom um, yeah yeah that I, well I didn't get a copy of it you you'll you'll get it as part of your your uh, your bill probably and it'll probably be just an insert or something like that this is a letter that they send to Conway as a local licensing authority. We get these things all the time. Yeah. I usually put them, Phil, you should know, um, there are two purple mail folders in that select board uh, box over there, which has this folder of yours and, and any related material. The first one is mail that is significant and substantial and is going to need select board attention. The one behind it is stuff that we get that just comes in and is very pro forma. Flotsam and jetsam. Every time there's a programming change, we get a letter from Comcast. Mm -hmm. So that's where those go. Um, if you'd like to you know, look through that, please do. Um, if you see things in there that you would like bumped up to a greater level of select board attention, just let me know and we can do that. So, there are, just look at it and you'll see what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, d just, I mean, I, I, um, they, Comcast does not send out paper bills anymore. Um, and I, I actually oh, tried. I get a paper bill. You do, you, you must have opted into it. You must have opted specially. To the town maintain. actually gets a, a paper bill, which isn't a bill. They, they owe, they've owed us $3 and 16 cents since I've been working here. <laughs> But we get it every month. Okay. All right. 
Okay, next item we got in the mail was a, uh, a letter from Senator Hines, um, basically in, in answer to uh, our um, resolution in favor of renewable energy that was passed at the uh, May 14th annual town meeting. And uh, he's just basically saying that he's in line with us and he is promoting uh, more renewable energy and he sent us a press release that he had sent out uh, in, in June about what he is doing uh, supporting renewable energy. So that's, uh, that's from Senator Hines. Uh, we also received the Municipal Advocate, which is from the Massachusetts Municipal Association. And this is the Education and Finance Edition, which goes into expanding role of schools, funding formula needs update, oh, big time. A charter school funding, that's another big one, and enrollment challenges in the Berkshires. So there's always some interesting information issue. in this. Okay, now do we all get one or it's just the town get one? You got one? Yep. Mm -hmm. You got one, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my so. name's on the label and everything. Yeah, moving up in the world. <laughs> and we also received an annual report from Massachusetts Housing Partnership that goes into uh, some of the work they've done throughout the state uh, in this in this last year. So more interesting information for uh, certainly uh, what's going on in housing. Uh, do we give this to the housing committee or do we just keep it on file? Uh, this is for you. Okay. Yeah. We'll keep it here. So, uh, um, I guess this is the mail section. I got the newspaper in the mail today, and uh, <laughs> the front page had uh, Kulik saying, uh, quote, quoted as saying that the conference, well, the budget conference, is now concluded. Uh, I, I saw the headline. Uh, he was talking about, yeah, he was talking about the, the conference. So, did the amendment 1300 uh, throw, uh, three, what, the amendment 308 or whatever that, the, or, Oh, 318. 318. Yeah, the, uh, so did that? Uh, so he and then in the in, he was quoted a, kind of cryptically, I thought, as saying that the whole state's now aware of this um, issue. Does that mean that that survived the conference process I, or not? I didn't read the article itself, but I'm sure we can find it online somewhere. Is whether whether it got through or not. Um, okay. okay. I'm just sneaking a question in the agenda there. Yeah. Tom, would you, Lisa, could you could you just change the uh, the name on this one and give it to me for signature, Tom? If you would. Okay. We have any announcements? No announcements. Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, the twenty third, here in the town offices at six p.m. Okay, if there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Aye.